Um, so the very first thing that we had to figure out is what standards do we want to look at right away. So we figured out our standards and then um, the very first question is, is what do we want our students to know and to understand? So we found the specific standards that are in Minnesota standards and we, and we typed them up. And then we found our objectives. And so on our PLC layout, on this template, we have the I can statements, and we also have all of our we also have all of our standards already typed up in there. It's right there. This is on Google Docs. All of us have that on our iPads, um, and so we're looking at that throughout our PLC. So we figured out what do our students need to know during this process right now, and we found that it was so important to have those I can statements, and they're already on our Google Docs. We put them up on the board. Our objectives are done. Our objectives are done on a daily basis or a weekly basis or depending on how long it takes you to get through those standards. So from that point, we looked at it and we continued and we decided to write our lesson plans as a team. And so we also put those on Google Docs. And our lesson plans are organized by, um, by the subject, so we have math plans. And then specifically, we'd write our standards at the top of our math, at, at the top of our lesson plans for the week. So it starts out with looking at Monday we always do our basic fact practice, then we look at our lesson. These are what our students need to know, and we found the vocabulary and the, word, the wordage for our lesson plans in our standards. And from there, we looked at our be beginning level, on level, and enrichment students, because we always have our pre-assessment that tells us this is the stuff that they already know, and so we need to have something for every single one of those. Um, then we write our objectives right on our lesson plans, and then we also, <laughs> We also created ourselves a math block in the afternoon to help us because we weren't getting as quickly through our math lessons as we were that we needed to to get us to the MCAs, which are next week for us. So we do this every week, and our focus is always the standards, and they're always visible. Question two was, how will we know that our students know this? So therefore, we had to come up with comment, or common, informative, common formative assessments. Uh, we created these using the standards, which Tom helped us put those together. We used resources like SciMath website, Learning Point Navigator, Everyday Math, along with others. At the top of our assessments, we had our standards written on there. We used our open data to give us a broad idea of where the student was at with each strand. We have the students take a pre-assessment, and that way we would know where we needed to go from there. Um, we will have data be explained later by Emily. Following the pre-assessment, we then would set up a goal for our team. For example, if we had 18% proficient with the pre-assessment, we decided to then set our goal for 70% proficient on the post-assessment. We Our starting point was determined it was 70% with the help of Bruce on that. Throughout the unit, we would give our quick checks, which would also help us decide, again, see where the student learning is, what is the growth, how are they doing. We had a aha moment, and we thought, how are we going to make these assessments common assessments? Well, we realized that when taking these assessments, some teachers were reading the assessments out loud to their students, while others were not doing that. So we needed to see how is this going to be done the same. We then did decide to um, have them be read all out loud by every teacher to the students. So then after we would give our assessments at our PLCs every week, we would go on and we would enter scores after every assessment into our database, our student database. And um, typically, when we are within our PLC, we would have students' names up there as well. And so that we could look and identify exactly which students in which class were successful with their assessments and which we needed to work with a little bit more. Um, data privacy, we're not putting up there, obviously, for everybody. But um, we then color-coded the cells. So we would put in our pre-assessment and we put in a percentage. And our percentages were, um, Bruce helped us figure out our percentages. So proficient was 70% or higher. We thought about trying to raise that to 80% or higher. Um, and then the green means that they're, they're kind of what we would call our bubble students. They're almost there. And those were 50 to 
our yellow cells were students who had still quite a ways to go, and they were 30 to 49 percent. And if a student fell in the red cell, um, they were in need of an intervention, and we needed to do something as quickly as possible for them. Um, so we would put that in, and we would uh, put all of our scores up, and we would talk about it. We would be able to compare what certain teachers are doing, especially after quick checks. When you put in a quick check, we would watch growth happen, and we at our PLCs were able to talk about what did you do? How did you help your students? Because so many of your students grew, and I didn't. Um, and then we would look at the post-assessment, and we were able to oftentimes celebrate how great our kids did over the unit. The thing that I think is probably the most fun with this is we, or at, well, I think all of us, with our students in our class, because you can hide everybody's names, I would put this up and I'd show my kids, look at how much you grew. Look at what our class did. This is incredible. We went from this percentage to this percentage. And look at this individual student. They went from this to this. And they were very, very excited. And I think all fourth grade classrooms had chances to celebrate because they were so excited and it gave them that encouragement to go on in. Well, I'm not one of the mainstream teachers. Um, I'm a specialist. I would also consider myself kind of an outsider. Especially when you go up here, and, and what I thought from my standpoint is um, a lot of these things didn't you know, necessarily pertain to me, but what I thought the teachers had done really well was they put all their names up there in front of everybody, and so when you could compare and see what the uh, results were, some of them did much better than others, and I thought it was really cool how they would um, the ones who were performing, their students were performing as well. They, they go, wow, what did you do? What did you do? How did you teach that? And they were all sharing back and forth. And I know from um, myself, just my own competitive edge, I always kind of want to be out there at the top. And I thought if you put your name, you know, right up front with everyone to see it, um, they, they were really um, open to giving ideas and accepting ideas. I thought that was nice. Um, the other thing that was helpful to me was that, like, like Heather said, the names of the students are not there. But we could see, we did share them with us, with each other. And for me to see, I, I teach two fourth grade classes, so I would look at mainly at the two classes that I taught, and it helped me to understand some of the students, how. Um, how they were performing or not performing, how they were testing, and um, then also with the bubble students that we had been given, uh, helped me to kind of help identify and work with, with those students. So that's where, as a specialist, it helped. <laughs> I was one of those teachers that probably went into this kicking and screaming more than anybody, just because I didn't need somebody to point out to me every day where my kids are. I already know it. It probably closed my eyes and picked them up. So I went in and spent some time getting to know Brent. Uh, we sat in the back and visited. Then uh, <laughs> Cassie brought donuts, and I think that kept us from talking. <laughs> so yes, it worked. And then we kind of started. I started having this, you know, wow, they're actually looking at my kids and seeing what they can do. So one day, as we were talking, Cassie said, "You know, what? I have to present to admin." Um, I got all these numbers, but how can I make them look at this and see it quickly? So we decided, hey, can we make pictures for them to understand? Um, and we came up, and it took about six hours to make our first graph. Um, but. Yeah. But, but it's very, it's very easy for the kids to see and for us to see. Um, we took our pre-test and then threw in our quick checks and then compared it to the post one at the end there. And we got to see a nice, quick uh, visual of how our kids jumped. And the teachers could take this into the classroom and say, hey, look at how we're doing as a class, if you want to put that in the classroom. Um, we then broke them down by classrooms. And the only reason we changed these colors around is just so that we could see the difference. We gave the quick checks. Um, you know, everybody was scoring pretty high, so we made those kind of a lighter color. Um, 
but their blue is our pulse there. And by looking at this, the kids can say, hey, wow, it's a lot easier than looking at the numbers. Um, some of the teachers now have been using them to compare um, the means and, and show the ranges to the classroom. So it's, it's a nice visual. And you know, we said if you guys want to know how, ask. Um, it now takes about two minutes to whip one out. <laughs>